This is the Apple one month overview reading for the month of November 2023. It's currently September 29th, 2023, 820 p.m. Eastern time. Apple in the extended hours at the time of this reading is $171.33. That's a USD. And the shuffle video that we're about to play for you was created on September 3rd, 2023, 252 p.m. Eastern time. That's this video right here. The overall theme and behavior for November, we have a sideways fluctuating rally that precedes a decline. It's crossed with a U-shaped dip, a peak with a valley in between, or two peaks with a valley in between. So that's pretty interesting. It should be pretty mixed. But when we look closer at it, it does follow a very similar pattern to that of what we've seen um, for, for many of the November readings. The only difference, the main difference, I think, is that when we look at the one year, what I see is a lowest low for the year here on the cusp of November, December, which I may have left out because I did this reading so long ago. The 2023 one year reading was created on October 18th, 2022. That's almost one year ago today, still being used um, and very, very much accurate. We had a highest high here in July or June, July, and look where we had the high right here in July. We had this opportunity, a decline out of an August high. Right, we had this decline out of an August high. Um, offering opportunity to open up a long position. And then we had another sharp drop off of the September high uh, with the Unicursal. And you can see we're, we're on our way into, there's a lot of decline here in October, it looks like. Well, it's mixed in October, but what, what's most important is it looks like there's a couple of peaks and there's a, there's a lowest low before the second peak. Um, like a lowest low, just at like the very end of November or um, on the cusp of November, December. So maybe it might be that it comes after the peak. It's hard to say because they're so vertical one on top of the other. Um, but that's a pretty solid reading. You saw how long ago it was done. Um, the behavior around the highest high for the month of November, we have a decline that offers an opportunity to open up a long position, indicating one of two things most likely um, that we decline from the high and then we revisit the high in the same month here, which is what it actually looks like, or we decline from the high and then we revisit the same high in the following month or in the following month, it could even be a higher high either way. Um, but based on what I'm seeing here, it looks like we probably revisit the high and the decline often highs opportunity to open up a long position before you see the high again. And then there's a U-shaped dip in there as well, which we'll get into. Behavior around the lowest though, there's an important technical price level on a, one, on a year to date scale, on a one year chart scale, an important technical price level um, at the low and we should see sharp drops taking us into the lows sharp sharp drops taking us into the low or lows um, they'll stand out really on a one month chart probably on a year to date chart as well based on, on its prominence here at the low card significator but most importantly make sure that you, that you remember that it's going to be an important technical price level on a one year chart scale minimum um, before we get into where those highs are to the day highs and high uh, high size and lowest lows as well as the um, overall tra chart behavior day by day and the best trade opportunities that we see before we get into all of that let's take a look at the september reading and see how we did uh, we don't take any of our readings down guys so whether it's a good reading or a bad reading, we leave it up because I, I take a very scientific stance on what we do here at Tower for Traders and the Investor Profit. Um, we're, we're creating, a, like we're compiling a huge database of metaphysical research, um, basically overwhelming evidence that es extrasensory perception can be used practically in the real in the real world. Um, to like, you can use it practically with like reliable results, and that's what we're proving here day after day, month after month, year after year. Um, but this one's a little bit off. So what I what I think is most important is that we had this highest high at the beginning of the month. We were off a few days on that. Um, first, second. Third, uh, six, excuse me, first, fifth, sixth. Yeah, so we were off uh, like a day. Uh, two, we were off two days on the high. What we did get was that there was a sharp drop off of the highest highs. So that definitely would have been something to look for. And even if you got into a long, into a short position here on, on the 8th, there's a strong likelihood that you still made money to the downside based on, on, on the fact that we had the lowest lows pretty accurate for the most part. So that's looking pretty solid. Um, We had a lowest low here around the 20th, 21st. It was hard to determine where it was there. And it looks like also the Ace of Cups here, um, very, very often the Ace of Cups is a bottom on a one month scale or on a one year scale. And you can see that's the 28th. We end up having the low there on the 28th. As far as my prediction, I may have left out the 28th because I don't have it marked off. It's possible I might, I might have left that out. Um, but even, even if that was left out, Opening up a long position on the 8th, closing it on the 21st, 20th, still would have yielded a huge, uh, huge gain. Yeah, and there are quite, quite a few things indicating an important low here on the 6th that I left out. But overall chart behavior, pretty good. Um, another location where you would have opened up a, uh, a short position would have been on the 11th. Another opportunity, right? So you would have opened a partial short position here, probably the rest of the short position there on the, on the 11th, 12th. Right, 11th, 12th right here before a notable decline and an opportunity to close that short position on the 14th. And you can see that that worked out pretty solid. Guys, these are the trades that we that I covered in the paid version of Apple in the September reading. There's people who actually had this information. We're planning these trades a month in advance because they have the paid version. They support the channel. Um, the way that you can get the paid version is here on our website, Terra for Traders, under SO, our, our services, SO Meta Posts. Scroll down to one month subscription, click here. Subscribe to whatever ticker crypto you're interested in. As far as the Amazon and Google, you have to get the, the all paid. Um, if you're interested in more than one ticker of crypto, get the all paid and you get access to all of them. And we're not right all the time, remember that, but we're right most of the time. And even when we're off on certain things, we still have pretty good accurate information as far as trades are concerned. Um, so make sure to follow through. We also talk about paid, uh, or about price levels. If there is price level information, we talk about that in the paid versions now, um, as well as you, you only get the first portion in the public version. The paid version has the complete reading moving forward through November. We no longer give out the whole month for free. Um, we talk about it also from multi-year standpoint multi-month standpoint and of course the best trades that we see in the month of November.
All right, so as far as highs and highs, uh, high highs are concerned, there's a couple of locations where we've, we likely have a highest high. Remember, the main difference for Apple in November to the pattern of the other ones is that we have a lowest low for the year, most likely here. And you can see there with the low for November on the one year is this prominent move higher, breaking through resistance, staying above it briefly, and then breaking back down through the same price level. So that's kind of like a mixed kind of behavior as well, right? And I think what we do is we go from a highest high somewhere around the 8th, 9th, most likely around the 8th, 9th. Um, but that's actually follows a lowest low around the uh, possibly even the third, the third through the sixth. Yeah, it's pretty mixed, right? So we have like this decline from a peak or crest in early November. And then at the end of November, this fast sudden fire marking the end of a decline, the, the upper end of, of the range here in November, it, it, we're bound by the upper end of a range. And it, it actually may very well be the high from June or the high from, it could be this price level. It could be this price level somewhere around here. We'll talk about that in more detail in the paid version. Um, so the highest probable location um, of the lows for the month are on the 10th and the 17th. But my sense is that there's so much back and forth going on and we have highs and lows within cl such close time proximity to each other here for Apple that there's quite a lot of volatility going on here in November. And we may be off like a day. Or there's probably some areas where we're off like a day or two, but the sequence of events as far as the pa pattern of the, the peaks and troughs and the overall chart behavior should still remain very accurate as far as sequence of events. And we should still get the, the highs and the lows within like a day or so um, in most cases. And I think the, the highest, the strongest probable locations for the lowest lows here on the 10th, um, and then here on the 17th, plus or minus a day. And then the strongest probable locations of the highest highs, it's interesting. It's like we go from a highest high, we go from a highest high around the 15th, uh, th somewhere around the 15th or the, the 13th, 14th, 15th. There's, there's also some probability of lowest lows here. Like it might be a lowest low thus far up here on the 6th, 7th, somewhere around there, maybe like a double lowest low thus far. And then highest probable location is the low here on the 10th after a high on the 9th. And remember these, these black stars indicate probable locations of a sharp drop. It doesn't mean that every single one of these black stars, we're gonna have a sharp drop that'll stand out on a multi-day scale, but it, one, at least one of those locations will have a sharp drop. Um, and remember it'll be into lowest lows. Interesting. So I'm gonna also highlight that, right? So there's some, there's some locations here around the third, like the third, the 6th, 7th, where we might have a lowest low thus far, and then on the 10th-ish, a lowest low, and then on the 17th, a lowest low. Um, but there's a highest high around the 8th, 9th, in the midst of that, like, and a sharp drop to meet that, uh, the lowest low after the highest high. The same thing goes for the highest high around the 15th, the 13th, 14th, 15th. It may be that we see it more than once. There should be a sharp drop into the low. So after after pushing the upper end of a range higher here on the 15th, 13th, 14th, 15th, we should drop into a low on the 17th, or it may, like I said, it may, it may be off a couple of days. The lowest low cor uh, correlation may be indicating here on the 20th, um, but we have highest highs again. So really mixed, guys. We have highest highs again for the month. Um, the abundance card in a lot of cases indicates a highest high. I'm not sure why this is purple. It's supposed to be green. In a lot of cases, it indicates a highest high or a highest high, a high side thus far. And there's a lot of ruined stuff going on here. But then we, we drop into a sharp um, decline and then another sharp drop on the 28th could take us into a lowest low again before a notable rebound, it looks like, on, by the 30th to the upside. As far as the best trades... Okay, so if, we had, if we're at a lowest low thus far here on the third, I would open up a long position before a big move higher that would stand out on a multi-day scale. If I see that big move higher, then I wouldn't do it because I would have waited too long. Might have another opportunity. Now, I think here around the cusp of the 8th, 9th, I would be able to close that long position. Probably the, the, late, late in the day on the 8th, but it could be early in the day on the 9th before another sharp drop. So at, when I close that long position, I might open up a short position, closing that short position. If I have the opportunity with a sharp drop on the 10th, I would do it, but it's more likely that we have a... Sharp drop over the weekend and then an opportunity there on the 13th. So this is another short position that I like, uh, a short trade that I like because there's multiple opportunities. If we're wrong about the first one, there's another one. So if you get a good opportunity to take a good profit here on the 10th, take it. If you don't wait until the 13th, there's a brief peak that's easily missed. It may be a highest high or just a really prominent peak or crest. And then we should sell off through multiple supports into a, a trade opportunity there. I would close it there. And if that doesn't work, I think probably the beginning of the day on the 20th would be the last opportunity. And if there is an opportunity for the 20th, obviously take it. You don't want to be in a short position for long. It's called short for a reason, guys. Make sure that you're not in them for a long period of time. With a short, when you see the profit, take it immediately. You will regret not taking that profit 90% of the time. That's Apple for November. Let me know uh, what you guys think. Um, and uh, obviously make sure to follow that rule of karma as always. You do so here on the resources tab of our website, Tarot for Traders. 5% of the profits forward, 5% of the profits backwards, 90% spent out of love. Follow those rules. You're an angel investor of the channel. The universe is going to send it back to you tenfold, my friends. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. I'll see you guys on the next one.